Welcome to my home. Hi, I'm Cindy Merritt and I'm your local real estate partner. And just like you, I live, work, and play in the Richmond, Virginia area and all around our wonderful surrounding counties. So we are in the month of October, the month for the quintessential scary things. And we are here with Chris Sipner and we are at the Edgar Allan Poe Museum. And who do you have here? This is Pluto, one of the Poe Museum cats. He's one of our greeters. He okay. loves to greet children and show them around the museum. So talk to me about the Edgar Allan Poe Museum and Edgar Allan Poe. I mean, we have the scariest writer ever that's right here in our backyard. Well, the Poe Museum is the world's largest collection of Poe's things. Everything from lock of his hair down to his socks. We oh, really? These personal items that really take you back in time to meet the person there. This is the closest thing you have to seeing Poe in the flesh. And so you really get to go back to Poe's world and to Poe's imagination. You get to see where these creations started. And they started a lot of times right here in Richmond. This is his hometown. This is where he grew up. So this is where Poe spent more of his life than any other city. And that's why they decided back in 1922 to open a Poe Museum here. It actually was originally called the Poe Shrine. This structure here is the Poe Shrine. Okay. It's made out of bricks from the office where Poe used to work at 15th and Main. But the center of the museum, the first thing people see when they leave the gift shop is the Enchanted Garden. This was all landscaped in 1921 as Poe's Memorial in Richmond. The idea was that Poe wrote more than horror stories, more than okay. mysteries, more than science fiction, that Poe primarily considered himself a poet. So as Poe's Memorial, they recreate a three-dimensional, living, breathing Poe poem as the garden. It's based on his poem, To One in Paradise, that starts out, Thou wast that all to me love, for which my soul did pine, a green isle and the sea love, a fountain and a shrine, all wreathed in fairy fruits and flowers, and all the flowers were mine. So you've got a green isle, fountain, shrine, and because the poem said all the flowers were mine, these founders decided to list all the different flowers and trees and shrubs that Poe ever mentioned in a poem or a short story, and to plant as many of them as they could. So today you'll still see a lot of those original plants, and whenever possible to get plants from places that Poe lived or worked or visited, including the boxwoods from places he visited in Dinwiddie County, the ivy from Poe's mother's grave. Oh, really? So really they wanted you to sense Poe's presence. They wanted to bring his poetry to life. Tell me, where does where did Edgar Allan Poe get his inspiration for some of his great works, like The Raven? We all remember The Raven uh, from school. So where, where did those kind of things come from? And was he truly mad at that point? No, he wasn't mad. He wasn't mad. He got a lot of his inspiration from newspapers. Nope. So okay. it looks like he kept a file of interesting news articles, kind of like Sir Arthur Conan Doyle did for Sherlock Holmes Mysteries. There was a fellow in Philadelphia called James Wood who had murdered his whole family and now he's claiming he's not guilty of a reason of insanity and Poe covered that case. Samuel Adams, not the Samuel Adams, but a different Samuel Adams. He got into an argument in New York in 1841 with a fellow named John C. Colt. And Colt murdered him. And he decided, well, I've got to get rid of the body. How about I just put it in a crate and ship it to New Orleans? So he boxed it up and sent it down there. And this made the papers of the day and might have inspired Poe's story, The Oblong Box, about a fellow who is shipping his wife in a crate. So you've got a lot of events going on this month uh, here at the museum. Can you tell me about some of the things that are going on this well, month? There are events going on all over the place. It's Arttober. The Poe Museum seems like it has something going on pretty much every week, every day. We've got coming up on the 18th, the Koi Club event here. On the 19th, we've got Poe Film Festival reception here. Okay. Then the next week we'll have on the fourth Thursday of the month, the unhappy hour. And it's kind of like a happy hour, live music, a cash bar of local breweries providing the refreshments, mm -hmm. food provided by local restaurants. Mm -hmm. And people can kick back and relax in the garden. Okay. And there'll be Poe readings, Poe exhibits, Poe tours. 
So good time for everybody. And every Sunday from the summer on, we have readings right out here in the garden. Then there's Poe's Pumpkin Patch. Oh. The last Saturday of the month is Poe's Pumpkin Patch. Okay. And so if your kids are too normal and too boring, <laughs> yes. you can bring them here, make sure they get good and weird. Good and weird. Yeah. Okay, what, what do you do then? There's Poe themed fun and games, you wear costumes. So it's, there's still going to be pumpkin decorating, but we also want you to do some black cat puppets and raven puppets and all sorts of fun. Okay, that sounds like it's a, going to be a fun event. So you always want to keep checking the website, check our Facebook and see what we've got going on out here because we always want to have something new, something different, a little treat for the visitors. It's wonderful. You, you are very passionate about this. I can just feel it from you and I can feel it here in this environment that we're in. So um, thank you so very much for, for sharing this with us. My pleasure. Um, if you're interested in coming down to the Edgar Allan Poe Museum, please make yourself at home and check out their website. Come on down, this is a great month. The weather's changed, it's beautiful out here, and the, but the garden is still lovely. And thank you, Chris, so much for letting us join you. You're welcome. Thank you. Cindy Mary is nationally recognized as a leader in the U.S. real estate market. Of the more than 35,000 realtors in Virginia, the American Institute of Real Estate Professionals consistently ranks Cindy in the top 10 best realtors in the state. Make Yourself at Home is sponsored in part by Paul Adams, branch manager and nationally recognized senior loan officer with Prime Lending, a Plains Capital company. With over 400 mortgage options available, Paul Adams and his team work hard to uncover the key to each client's mortgage success.